So here I am. I'm back with this pink Peruvian opal pendant. Now I discovered, sorry, previously that I did not have enough wire to do any securing down here. There we go. Now I'm in frame. So I am cutting some more wire doing that about the length of that. Now that I have my length down, I'll cut one more. Put the other one to the side. And now I have some very sharp edges that I'm going to trim downwards so that they're not going flying everywhere. You don't want one of these stuck in your foot, believe me. I have had it happen. I have a little dish that I dot drop those in. Now, I have those two. Put my cutters off to the side and straighten that out a little bit. So, now I am going to start off with a little bit of coiling on this guy. Do my tail down, secure, and then tail around a few times. There we go. Still sticking out a little bit because, well, that's the way I like to leave it. Now, I think this one is going to get attached down here. Maybe not. I'll attach it to this one. No, I'm going to attach it to this one. Yes, I made up my mind. Really, I did. So. No, it's going to have to go on this one. Otherwise, I'm not going to have enough room to weave anything. So, let's do the three and three again. Two, three, oops. And then one, two, three. Over the single wire, and then again over the two wires. One, two, three. And then in one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, those wires are kind of distorted. Give it a little bit of tension as I'm wrapping this time, so I can't do it so cute quickly. But the tension is because the wires were distorting as I was wrapping, and you never can quite get them straight again if you let them do that. Two, three. Ugh, get in there. Come on. There we go. One. Two, three. Oh, I'm just going to slide this up the base wire a little bit further. And then it's going to go down there. Kind of echoing with that one. I kind of put the, see the bottom one. The empty spaces are pointing this way. On this one, the empty spaces are pointing this way. I have to move that light. That didn't quite work right. Okay. So, I do actually like to make everything reversible, so I think I'm going to end up fixing that a little bit when I'm done. But I'm going to wait until I'm done because I always go back and fix things and fiddle with them until I'm satisfied. 
have a very perfectionist kind of attitude. And I think anybody who wants to make a business at this and wants to make money selling wire wrapped jewelry should also be a perfectionist. Because I don't know about you, but I would always prefer stuff to look like it was done by a professional. And if you don't adjust things and do the little finishing touches, it doesn't look like it was done by a professional. Which is okay. I mean, you want to be an amateur and you want to give gifts and stuff, that's great. You want to be a professional and sell, then you need to learn the finishing touches. Because the finishing touches are everything. One, two, three, and squish. They look right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera because I keep moving out of camera spot. Right there. That is a gap that I don't really find acceptable. But right now, I can't really fix it just with pulling on it with my nails. So I will fix it in the finishing steps. I will either squish it together, or the other trick would be to disguise it. Because you can always put a bead there or something like that. One, two, Three. This one I think is going to end up a tiny bit longer than the other one because I'm kind of just going as I go here. One, two, three. See? And will it focus? Yay, focus! And you can see the gap there. Oh look! My player fingers strike again. I hold very, very tight when I'm weaving and close to where I'm weaving so that I don't pull it all crooked while I am weaving because I'm notorious for that. I pull too hard, I squeeze too hard. You may notice I don't do a lot of colored wire stuff. That's because when you pull too hard and squeeze too hard, you use tools and you take the finish off of colored wire, which doesn't really look very professional. Oh, goodness. That is a wibble, and that is why that's all weird. Speaking of... Not quite. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Whoops, I crossed on that last one. That's never a good thing. See? So you can't do things too quickly. One, two, Three. Bend it. Darn it. A couple more times around. See what's going on there, too. Stay. Three. One. Two. Three. Okay. That is long enough. So now I am going to give it a quick up. Get out of the way. Up. And over. And I'm going to put the 
this one in there. And this one is going to become coiled. Get it a certain ways away from the piece and you can do that thing that I did on part one. Except this is not working so well. Maybe there we go. I had to make the angle better. My lovely floppy twenty two gauge. I'm just gonna do it this way. Seems to be working better on this short piece. I hate doing it this way though because it really stiffens the wire. Speaking of stiffening the wire, I need more wire. And how do you do it when it's still attached? Well, you take off the little bent part that's holding everything together. Make sure that doesn't kink. And then you pull out a couple of loops and then you put the bent thing back on there. There we go. And do 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 I really should put some music on or something, but We will find out. Almost to the end. As you can see by, I don't know if you can see how kinky that wire is now. That's because I'm going around and around instead of that turn the piece and hold the wire trick. Because I've got a sharp spot. Okay, so I am going to take this little bit of wire and clip it. I'm not going to need all that. And this up there, give it a couple of good little twists. out between these two. And this one. I don't know if you can see the me feeding the wire in. There's a reason why I'm doing that. Before I feed this wire in, come on, get in there. Aha, success. There we go. Now, all I need to do is pull that. We don't have any issues. So that. Going to get to tucked in there. Pretty cool little coil on the end there. See? That looks cool. Okay, so here's our swoop for this one. And I think, I was trying to decide if I want that to go over that or not. 
There's that little mangled hook from earlier. Let's see if I can straighten that out a bit. Get in there. And straighten the hook out. Hook it under this piece. Uh, try not to bend the piece you are trying to hook around. And squish. contour of the swirl. Now that that is done, we will use this part to hook onto here. There we go. Nice little decoration on the side there. Twerks, twerks, hey! <laughs> A couple of tweaks, that looks good. This guy is going to attach a bead there. So we still have a couple of extra wires here. Oh, and I need to trim. Alright, so. As for a bead for here, I could use a larger bead. It doesn't have to be the two millimeter. So I think I'm going to go with a crystal. Swarovski crystal. And let's slide down. own shape. It always works better when you work with the curve of the wire instead of against it. And keep it in the light. Now I think I need something else in here. Just doesn't seem like enough to me. However, I would like to keep these guys from for being the bales. So what am I doing with this one? And uh, press down while pulling actually closes the loop a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to anchor that by putting it underneath that. So press and pull to close. Tuck. And squeeze. There we go. Now when I get these guys all situated. Looks like I have something else to trim there. Okay, there we go. Push, push, push to shape the wire. I 
kind of want there's some imperfections in the back here and I'm trying to keep this over top of the imperfections to lessen the look of them. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, here is where I decide if I'm going to put anything else on. Because if I'm going to flesh it out down here a little, I could add this other piece of 22 gauge. Oh look, it fits in the crystal. Perfect. Because then I can just take this tail. So that's always happens to me. Don't know what I'm going to be doing until I try something and then it works. So I keep doing it. <laughs> Shape it to the crystal just a tiny bit. There we go. I'll deal with this piece right here. I'll deal with that when I'm done. Because as it stands, it is trying to be wobbly right now. So you know, all it's going to need is that extra wire all wound up there. So, that should be okay. This one I'm going to do the trick with. Nice even one. And squish. Ugh, come on. Okay, now anchor this because it's starting to flop around from the twisting. There we go. That's a good anchor. Such shorter time I mean, I could just use a drill or something, but then it's not handmade. If you use power tools, it's tool made. Although I guess some people could think differently because, I mean, if your hand is holding the tool, then it's still handmade. But I like to be able to say no power tools were used in the creation of this. I even polish by hand and I use chemicals to age my stuff, but I use these lovely polishing blocks. They're actually for doing manicures, and they work very well for adding shine to the patina once you patina something. Oh, I'm feeling... oh, yes. I was feeling a little bit of a notch there that was coming up. Just about. Do, 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 do. See, isn't this much faster than trying to do it by hand? It's also better on my hands. I have arthritis starting to show up. Don't know if you can see the lump there, but as compared to my other finger, yeah, I have quite the little lump on my knuckle. It's to the point where I open cupboards and whack that lump. It's loads of fun. Okay, so I want this to go under there. So I have to be careful I don't bend it too much when I'm doing it, or I will make an interesting and undesirable shape. Might as well drag that around the back secure it like that 
didn't really talk about that while I was doing it, sorry. But you see how it looks better on the bottom now with that extra little bit sticking out? You can see that. Still doesn't look as good on the back as I would like, but this one isn't going to be fully reversible like I normally make them. Because I don't like how the back is looking. So there we go. And I'm allowed to not like it. Someone else will love it. I don't always like everything I do. Trim that. Give it a little push with the pliers. If you can feel a sharp bit, you need to push it down more. Here is that end. There it is. Okay, there we go. That's better. Check these ones. This one. Get that down just a tiny bit more. Here we go. And these ones. Okay, so it turns out I have three here ready for the bale. I'm going to do a three-piece bale. I'm going to trim them all to the same size. Not like I actually measure, I just eyeball everything. There we go. And take the bits put them in the little trash. Well, it's not a trash, it's a thing that's got copper bits. Now, I'm going to take my lovely multi-sized looping pliers and loop close together. Do the separating after. Come on, focus. Come on, there we go. Give it a little squeeze and a tuck. See how that made it kind of keyhole shaped? Well, the first one is going in there. If I can get it to go in there. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to put the players back in there and reshape after, I think. Now that it's gone in there, I'm going to pull it up and secure the rest with it. Come on, all the way around. There we go. You know, they're getting a little distorted while I do that. I might not have to put the looping players back in there. Yeah, I think they'll be okay. Now these other ones are just going to get little coils. Grab the end, give it a twist till it's all the way up. Same with this one, grab the end Give it a twist until it's all the way up, off to the side, off to the side, squish. Now this is a little pointed right there, so I'm just going to gently, gently squish it with the pliers so it doesn't deform the round shape too badly, but gets a little out of there. Now, give it, I can't really whack these because they're already secured. So if I give them a few good little squeezes with my pliers, 
that will harden them. All right, there we go. Get everything out of the way, put this down. We've got a nice little pink Peruvian opal pendant in semi Nicole Hannah style. Thanks for watching.